ionic bonding here will be sodium and chlorine. So as I said, sodium here will actually give up its electron to chlorine, and see by chlorine getting its eighth electron now, it gets a negative charge overall. Sodium, on the other hand, lost its electron, so now what's left behind is a positive charge. This makes sodium chloride. This is known as table salt. Those first two examples were a one-to-one -one atomic ratio, but now notice, even though it's a one calcium and one oxygen, there's actually two electrons that are being transferred. So one electron, two electrons, leaves behind a two-plus charge on calcium, and the oxygen, with its two vacancies for the octet, gets a one electron, two electron, a negative two charge for oxygen. So calcium oxide is an ionic bond that has a calcium with a two plus charge and an oxygen with a two minus charge. Again, see the octet is being filled by two electrons. Now see how the folding combined before. When magnesium was folded next to fluorine, we saw magnesium had two electrons in its outermost valence shell. So two electrons available, but fluorine only needed one more for its octet. So what we'll see now is that fluorine takes one electron, becomes fluoride anion. Magnesium gives up another electron to another fluorine, showing that we need two fluorines to balance the magnesium. And what we'll see is magnesium now will have a two plus charge. Fluorine, becoming fluoride anion, will have a minus one charge, but we'll have two of them. So this atomic ratio has a one magnesium and two fluorines. Magnesium, fluoride. On hydrogen, with its one proton and one electron, well, when that one electron goes to chlorine, which now fills chlorine's octet, this makes chlorine stable, but again, chlorine with the negative charge becomes chloride anion, while the H, what's left, one proton, one electron, take one electron away, you're left with just a proton. So this is an easy way to remember there's a positive charge on the proton. This is what hydrochloric acid is. In water, you have a proton, it's written H plus, and Cl minus, AQ meaning water. Now hydrochloric acid is a strong acid because this proton is given up very easily in water. And when this happens, this is called hydronium, written H3O plus, cation. Hydronium cation, positive charge. The chloride, negative, chloride anion. Now for the second type of bonding, covalent bonding, what we'll see is that an electron is available to pair up and the other element's electron is available to pair up. So they'll actually combine by getting closer and closer, and they'll get closer together, until we, what we'll see is that the vacancy will actually be filled by each other's electrons. So what this results in is a sharing of the electron pair between the two bonding elements. And this covalent bonding is where two electrons are now shared in an electron pair. So now an example of the covalent bonding is one of the diatomics, di meaning two. Well, two chlorine atoms will get together, both needing one more electron for their octet. See now if they share their electron pair, chlorine seven, then eight, this chlorine seven and eight. So they both end up having their octets filled and there's a sharing of this electron pair between them. That's why chlorine gas is Cl2. Another example of covalent bonding is for carbon being in the middle of the table with four valence electrons. What it needs is four more. So by pairing up here, we'll see that chlorine, needing one more electron, will share with one of carbon's vacancies. So chlorine has its octet. Fluorine, one more to give its octet. So we'll see the fluorine, a chlorine, a fluorine, a chlorine. This now gives everybody their octet what we'll see is a chlorofluorocarbon being formed, known as CF2Cl2, as a gas. So to continue with covalent bonding, we see oxygen needing two more electrons for eight. 
hydrogen has one electron available. So one hydrogen's electron can fill this empty space. Another one for this gives oxygen its octet. The two protons, remember hydrogen is one proton, one electron. The two protons of water, however, are positively charged on one side of the water molecule. So what can actually happen is with these lone pairs of electrons on oxygen, they can actually strip away one of the protons. This is kind of a reversal in order to create an ion that pulling an electron away. Remember, pulling an electron away will create a negative charge where the electron goes. But now the positive proton here brings a positive charge with it. So when this happens in water, what we see is oxygen, more electronegative, keeps the octet of electrons. Hydrogen, on the other hand, the one proton, will actually be pulled away to another water. And what this results in is what's called the hydronium H3 plus cation in water and the hydroxide OH minus anion in water. And this is what the pH scale is based on, the plus and minus charges in water. It's called the dipole nature of water. Now another type of bonding which actually occurs between molecules and not atoms is called the hydrogen bond, which is more specifically a proton bond because what happens in water is a proton being the positive portion of the water can be pulled away by the electron pair, the lone pair of another neighboring water. So what happens now is when the electron pair grabs onto the proton of another water, this is what makes water stick together. And this is known as the hydrogen bond, but the proton bond is actually what's happening. So one electron pair grabbing onto a proton of another water makes these two stick together. And by pulling the positive charge to one side of the atom, it makes this other water more negative down here, which means it's going to grab onto the positive part of another water, which will grab onto the positive part of another water. And this is what makes water stick together. Okay, now still octet shell filled have a more higher affinity to pull electrons away to fill those shells. What's stable in the world are electron pairs. Helium, element number two, has a pair of electrons. If we hold a match to a helium balloon, it would pop. It wouldn't explode. But hydrogen, on the other hand, only has one electron. So what we see is hydrogen has to get together with another hydrogen in order to form an electron pair. This was what was in the Hindenburg blimp. And this makes it explosive since the two hydrogens need to share the electron pair. What we see is after one pair of electrons, it takes four more pairs to get to the next noble gas, neon. Four pairs is eight. So if we see that we count to eight electrons, that's a stable stopping point. Now the table of the elements shows this, but we need to fold it. And when we fold it such that element number four lines up next to element five, we can now count across a new orbital shell, starting with lithium. If we count across, we'll get to eight at neon. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we would start a new shell with sodium and we count across eight again. So what this means now is after one pair of electrons with four pairs being stable next, this is known as an octet. So what I say is when we count to eight, we stop. So with noble gases being eight, if we came over one more, starting with fluorine, all the elements below fluorine have seven electrons in their valence outermost shells. So what this means is one more.